In 1917, Viktor Shlovsky published his piece, Art as Technique, where he argued that art has the ability to control the relationship of space and time through a prolonged perception of the familiar object. Art can make one see the familiar object anew, a technique Shlovsky refers to as defamiliarization. Such familiarity is evident in the model of our utilitarian societies, where effective orientation and clear organization are key elements in the realization of an efficient space. But in the context of a ludic society, disorientation and intensification redefine the relationship of space and time, and space is seen anew. The disorientation and exhaustion of circulation is arguably recreated in the technique of the labyrinth. This is Lean Katrib. This is a short film about Lean's investigation, Stranger Than Labyrinth, an exploration of the labyrinth on the flat surface and the labyrinth on the spherical surface. These are Lean's thesis books. The small book is a written exploration of the labyrinth as a defamiliarizing technique. She called it Labyrinth as Technique. The small book focuses on key elements of labyrinthine circulation, first defined by classical and renaissance thinkers, and later reinterpreted by modern, postmodern, and contemporary thinkers. The big book is a design translation of what labyrinth is on the spherical surface. She called it Stranger Than Labyrinth. But more on that later. The investigation begins through an analysis of four case studies of labyrinthine circulation. The first case study is the original labyrinth by Daedalus. The original labyrinth is constructed with an entrance and a center. It's a universal path made by six circular walls. It is claustrophobic, and at no point does one know what to expect. At the center is this guy, a senator. Would one end up there? The second case study is Campo Marzio by Giambattista Piranesi. It is a fictional plan of Rome. In comparison, this is the Noli plan, a real plan of Rome. The Noli plan makes a clear distinction between figure and ground. Buildings are depicted as solid masses that define a complex network of circulatory voids of the Roman urban fabric. On the other hand, Piranesi's fictional plan proposes a different reading of figure ground, exposing the interiors of, of private buildings, public spaces, existing buildings, imaginary buildings, interior chambers, niches, and circulation networks, reducing the singularity of different typologies into a collective of positive and negative. By doing so, the juxtaposition of real and imaginary details of Rome creates a vast labyrinthine plan of fact and fiction. The third case study is Palazzo Antonioni, from Robin Evans' figures, doors, and passages. This is a plan of the palazzo. It is divided into 14 individual chambers, all connected through openings and no hallways. The palazzo becomes a form of domestic labyrinth with no privacy given to a space. One can create a different journey through the palazzo each time. The fourth case study is Labyrinth City by Leon Creer, which is completely devoid of context, unlike Piranesi's plan. Labyrinth City is composed of a series of paradoxes, addition and subtraction, simple paths and complex paths, running bonds in the southwest and northeast facades, and the deflection of multiple centers, unlike Daedalus's original labyrinth. So to sum it up, the key ingredients of labyrinthine circulation are uncertainty and unfamiliarity, polycentricity, embodiment of paradoxes, and figure ground tortuousness. These key elements are arguably reinterpreted by several modern, postmodern, and contemporary thinkers, such as Le Corbusier's Promenade, Sena's Sherman Contemporary Art Foundation, UN Studios Mobius House, and OMA's Dutch Embassy at Juicio Library. But wait, what does all this mean? Why even talk about the labyrinth on the flat surface? It's so cliche. Its circulation has been experienced, drawn, and written about fairly extensively to the point of depleting its mystery. The truth is, the labyrinth has become too familiar a subject. And yet, it is still ambiguous. It is familiar, yet strange and alienating. It is positive and negative. The labyrinth is technique that allows one to see the familiar object anew. But what happens once the labyrinth is translated onto a spherical surface? On the flat surface, the claustrophobia of dispersed walls and objects creates an unfamiliar circulation. 
But once the labyrinth is translated onto a sphere, the geometry of the site upsets the key elements that would normally create labyrinthine circulation. Three of the case studies are translated onto a 40-foot diameter sphere. Daedalus in Plan, Section, Axon, Physical Model. Labyrinth City in Plan, Section, Axon, and Physical Model. And Palazzo Antonioni in Plan, Section, and Axon. Through these many translations, the surprising observation is, Labyrinth as we know it does not work on the sphere. Because guess what? The sphere itself is a labyrinth. On the sphere, familiarity is the certainty that uncertainty is to be experienced on the sphere. Familiarity on the sphere is distorted perception of space. Familiarity is the limited perception of space beyond 14 feet. Therefore, the uncertainty that the labyrinth creates on the flat surface becomes the norm. As the labyrinth is translated onto a sphere, the labyrinth on the flat surface is a question of space. But the labyrinth on the spherical surface is a question of perception. If limited perception of space is the norm on the sphere, then a forced perception of space in its entirety is the unfamiliar.